All right, YouTubers, how you diddling? This is Dispose List, and this will be my fourth beginner's guide for Battlefield 1. In this video, I'm going to talk about the assault primary weapons. I'm going to compare the different weapons and tell you about the variants and give you enough uh, information on the underlying details and mechanics to help you make the choice you need to make when you're about to spawn in. So for that particular situation, you'll pick the right weapon and for your own personal playstyle. So in my last video I spoke about the variants and the rifles of the medics and I noticed there are a couple of different families and that is true for the assault uh, weapons as well, though it's much more obvious for the assault weapons. Uh, you have two of the families, one family being your shotguns uh, and one family being your submachine guns. So in my previous videos I spoke about the underlying mechanics uh, of your primary weapons like uh, spread and recoil. I'm not going to recover those but I should say that shotguns have an additional characteristic to consider which is dispersion. Now dispersion is a description of the way that the individual pellets in a shotgun shell, because of course one shell fired from a shotgun actually sends out multiple pellets, so it's the way that those pellets move away from each other as they fly. They don't all stick together in a clump and hit their target in a clump. As the further away from the shotgun that they move, the further away from each other they get. So at a distance, those shotgun pellets have dispersed quite far and wide away from each other, which will, of course, uh, reduce the damage, uh, reduce the number of pellets hitting your target. So that dispersion is itself part of the makeup of the accuracy of a shotgun. I'm going to talk about the two families, uh, shotguns and submachine guns, separately, and I'm going to talk about their variants and then compare the different models. So first up uh, in the shotgun family is the slug. Now this is quite a, a unique and different variant. Uh, these descriptions over here on the right are very good for describing the variants. So you can see that this is equipped with a lens sight, but it fires slugs instead of buckshots. And so instead of those multiple pellets in a shell dispersing from the end of the shotgun when they're fired, you get a single slug, uh, much like a normal um, rifle. So this, over the other shotguns, gives improved accuracy and range. As I say, part of the accuracy of a shotgun is to do with its dispersion, so of course a single slug it doesn't disperse, it, it either hits or it doesn't. Um, and the range is partly due to lower bullet drag and higher velocity, so the air doesn't slow down the bullets as, as much as it does the pellets of another shotgun. Um, and the velocity as it leaves the rifle is better. So it says at the cost of raw damage, uh, and indeed if I look at the synthetic data, the maximum damage from this is 112, whereas the other shotguns tend to do something between 126 and 158, if, but that's if all the pellets hit. So of course this is quite different being a single slug, it either does that between 45 and 112 damage depending on the distance that it hits at, or it doesn't. So less damage um, is a relative thing. So next up is the Hunter variant, and as we can see in the description, it is equipped with a choke on the barrel. And you can actually see that in the graphics here. Oops. Um, so that choke there is the extended barrel, and what this does is give this shotgun pattern improved accuracy and effective range. As I said earlier, ac part of the accuracy of a shotgun is to do with its dispersion uh, of pellets as well as its range. So this choke. Uh, helps to make the pellets more concentrated, they disperse less over distance because of that choke. And so its effective range is also increased. The damage drop off is described as being slightly further than the other variants. One other characteristic of the Hunter underlying in the Synthic data is worse recoil recovery. So when that bucks up uh, in your view, the time it takes for it to get back to settle down again is slightly worse than the other variants. The factory variant uh, is the same across all classes, so like the medic rifles, this pattern quickly regains accuracy due to its lower weight. And what that means uh, underlying characteristic wise are spread recovery and recoil recovery are better than other variants. What this means in practice, the same as with the medic rifles, is that when you are firing more quickly, uh, this is easier to keep accurate because it recovers, uh, it resets quicker, it calms down more quickly from the changes in accuracy and uh, the jumping around of the crosshairs. 
somewhat of a special variant. As it says here, it's equipped with a duck bill choke, and you can see that in the graphics there. That's that uh, squashed choke at the end. If I get one without it, you can see the difference there. So this duck bill choke uh, on the barrel, it f and it also fires smaller buckshot pellets than other variants, the sweeper. Um, and this pattern offers higher close range damage at the price of quicker damage drop off and indeed the underlying figures show this if I sort of multiply the number of pellets by the damage for each pellet you can get up to 158 damage versus 126 damage with the other pellet variants um, but it has a worse dispersion horizontally well you'd call it a worse it has a wider dispersion horizontally because of this duck bill but a better dispersion vertically um, and it does have an earlier drop off uh, of damage here due to those uh, smaller pellets but I should say that dispersal being wider is not always a bad thing. Now, if you're against multiple opponents, they will generally be spread out in screen in front of you wider, not taller. So having a wide dispersion against multiple opponents at close range, Duckbill is great for. The backboard variant is equipped with a larger internal diameter barrel. And this shotgun offers reduced recoil at the cost of quicker damage drop. And there you can see in the damage drop against the Hunter there, it is a couple of meters uh, earlier, the damage drop off. Not an awful lot. And indeed in the underlying figures you can see that the recoil is less in all directions, both horizontally and vertically. And the recovery from recoil is quicker also with the backboard. Now the other shotgun variants are similar until we get down to the 12 gauge automatic extended version um, and as it says in the description here this is equipped with an extended tube magazine underneath the barrel here uh, and offering increased magazine capacity and that is simply it it offers uh, seven shells in the magazine versus five and the cost of that is worse dispersion so the effect it has on that shotgun is to increase the dispersion of the pellets Right, so now I'm going to compare the three shotgun models, the Model 10A, the M97 trench gun, and the 12-gauge automatic. And I'm going to compare the Hunter variants. They each have a Hunter variant, so that's an easier direct comparison to make, especially when it comes to looking at the underlying synthetic data. So, first up, we're talking about the Model 10A shotgun. And the first thing we see is the rate of fire is lower. The M97 has 138, the 12 gauge has 257, and the Hunter 78. But the damage is greater looking at the underlying synthetic data. That each It has more pellets, sorry, each pellet does the same amount of damage, but it has 20 uh, as compared to the M97's 15, and the 12 gauge has 11 pellets. Um, so, as with many weapons in Battlefield, you're weighing up the speed of fire against the damage. It may effectively have the same damage output over time, but depending upon your playstyle, you've got to weigh up whether you like to do lots of damage slowly or less damage more quickly. Now, mm -hmm. uh, suiting that kind of way of working with the 10A Hunter, it also has uh, a better spread recovery, uh, but a high spread increase and a high vertical recoil. So that thing jumps around, um, but it quickly comes under control. So you're talking about a big bang, a gap, a big bang, and a pause. That's the way that one works. Now, the M97 trench gun. There's a simple difference to to think about when you're looking at the M97, and that is you have a higher rate of fire. It's almost double the Model 10A, and it has an automatic firing mode. Uh, you can, of course, not hold your finger down, but when you do hold that finger down, it's going to fire those five shells quite quickly in a row, as fast as it can. But what you're costing is uh, a higher recoil from uh, left to right there's a higher recoil on the M97 so if you think you can control that recoil you could fire pretty fast so the 12 gauge automatic now it has that higher rate of fire but it's not automatic so you can have to spam that trigger finger to get that rate of fire that's almost four shells per second of course when you have a higher rate of fire you are going to start encountering 
compounded effects of inaccuracy of spread and of that uh, site jumping around of recoil but this does have a better recoil characteristics than the other and less of a spread increase than the other shotgun variant so you might be able to fire that really pretty fast and still keep on target it has lower damage than the other rifles that shotguns though um, it has 11 pellets as opposed to 15 and 20 of the other two models um, but it also has lower dispersion so perhaps more of those 11 will hit it's got a tighter cone generally than the other shotguns anyway so that is your toss-up when choosing the shotguns last but not least is the Schurgren inertial factory I have no idea if that's the correct pronunciation the Schurgren inertial factory but uh, I'll stick with it it has the a rate of fire that's slightly better than the M97 but damage that's slightly worse it's got 13 pellets I think the difference with this Shurgan inertial that you might want to use it for is it has the best horizontal recoil and good vertical recoil characteristics and the best spread recovery of all the shotguns so you can probably make full use of that rate of fire without uh, losing your accuracy or losing your aim Right, so now I'm going to talk about the submachine gun family. Much like the shotguns had that unique dispersion characteristic to think about, the submachine guns have first shot recoil multiplier. What this means is the first shot that comes out of that uh, submachine gun causes more recoil than the rest. So you've really got to concentrate when you first start firing a volley of shots from a submachine gun. You've got to concentrate on handling that recoil and then it's easier to control as you hold your finger down. The first variant to talk about is the trench and that is the same across all classes and uh, all weapons that say they are a trench variant. It improves its hip firing characteristics and I believe also slightly improves the uh, aiming down the sights when moving but mainly it's about hip firing. For the submachine guns, the MP18 Experimental, its most important uh, difference is it has burst fire mode only that fires three bullets when you press the trigger you can't fire one bullet it fires three bullets <coughs> but it does so with good effect it's firing those three bullets uh, and they're pretty accurate uh, the recoil is reduced as it fires them and of course you can keep pounding that trigger finger and it will fire as if it had full automatic mode but the other effects underlying that you can see from the synthetic data is it has less spread when looking down the sights when you're not moving so good accuracy if you stand still and aim it's got less horizontal recoil and reduced first shot recoil so we're talking a more accurate weapon um, here it's got better spread recovery so it settles down quicker from firing multiple rounds in a row um, but it has a slightly slower reload than the other weapons now the optical variant we've seen in the medic rifles and it has the same effect we're talking about less spread greater accuracy when aiming down the sights that's it and the automatico has variants uh, covered before in the, the medic rifles so just briefly the trench has better hip fire the storm has less recoil characteristics uh, reduced recoil characteristics and the factory recovers accuracy more quickly when firing fast so the regular set of variants for the automatico the hell regal uh, i'll talk more about the hell regal in detail uh, when i'm comparing the different smgs but the defensive variant um since we're talking about variants i'll just mention what it uh, seems to be over here over the hell regal factory for example is that it has better control and accuracy well if you look at the underlying data it actually has worse recoil so when it talks about better accuracy and control what it's referring to is it has a bipod so if you get the chance to use this bipod yeah it's got better accuracy uh, yes it has next to no recoil if you're not using that bipod if you don't get a chance to use that bipod then it has worse recoil and all you're getting from the defensive is a double sized magazine 120 bullets which of course it can't fire all of before it overheats that's covered the variants I'm going to jump back to the MP18 and start talking about comparisons of the submachine guns now what I've done is compared the factory versions of the ribeye rolls the Hell Regal and the Automatico and then I've compared it against the trench version of the MP18 as we know the trench just offers additional hip fire so we can kind of ignore those stats 
So first of all, the MP18, it's got a rate of fire of 550 rounds per minute. All the SMGs are going to be pretty fast. Um, 550 is uh, just under 10 per second. Um, the magazine size is 32. That's an important thing when it comes to submachine guns. How often you have to reload. We're talking about high damage outputs, but if you have to reload a lot, then that's going to reduce that effectively. Um, it has a sort of middle velocity. It's got 420. You can't see this here, of course, but underlying statistics, the bullet velocity is 420 meters per second. Automatico and the Hell Regal 380, slightly less. The ribeye rolls is 520, which is quite a lot higher. That, of course, increases your accuracy over distance um, and makes you have to lead your shots less also. Uh, other things from the Synthic data that you wouldn't necessarily realise is that it has good recoil characteristics compared with the other machine guns and less first shot recoil than some of the others. Um, as I described, that first shot recoil is increased for submachine guns, um, not quite so much for the MP18 as the others. So the Automatico. It has the bonkers rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute. So even though it has the lowest minimum damage, uh, that's 12 compared to 13.5 for the MP18, even though it has the lowest minimum damage, it by far has the largest damage output over time. You've got to weigh that up against the fact it has the worst first shot recoil. So you've got to control that rate of fire, but uh, it is just so impressive if you keep it on target that's just like squirting hell at someone. Um, as I said, it has a lower velocity, so your distance uh, is not going to be quite as impressive, your ranged accuracy. Um, but it has good hipfire characteristics, even on the factory variant. Uh, so the trench variant has superb hipfire characteristics. The Hell Regal. This has a 650 bullet uh, rate of fire 650 rounds per minute and impressively it has a 60 bullet um, drum there the 60 bullet magazine it has lower velocity like the automatico and a bit of a slow deploy and reload uh, speed because of that impressively sized drum I guess but very good recoil characteristics so against the others you're really weighing up that massive uh, drum of bullets Though I believe it does overheat at about 30, you just have to give it a brief rest and you can fire all 60 bullets really quite quickly. It's then got a slow reload, but you are still putting out a lot of bullets and you've got a very good rate of fire um, with an average damage, 13.5 damage per bullet. So it really does weigh up quite nicely against the Automatico. And finally, we're talking about the ribeye rolls. This is available in the They Shall Not Pass downloadable content. Now, this has the highest minimum damage at 15, um, but it has a low rate of fire like the MP18. Um, the MP18 had 13.5 damage, though, so it's still got a higher damage output than the MP18, and still reasonable when compared against the Automatico and the Hell Regal. Um, the magazine of 25 is not big, but we're talking about higher damage output per bullet. You'll, of course, find yourself reloading more often, but you're still putting out a good amount of damage. Um, and it has higher velocity bullets, as I mentioned earlier, 520 meters per second as compared to 420 for the MP18, 380 for the Automatico and the Hell Regal. And it's got a slightly faster reload and the best first shot recoil characteristics. So I think with the ribeye rolls, you're talking about slower speed but higher damage and better accuracy better handling not forgetting of course I had forgot but not forgetting that bipod so it already has good recoil characteristics and good aim when you're not moving but if you can put that bipod on that of course completely removes the recoil effect further enhances the spread characteristics of the weapon so that gives it even better capability um, at longer ranges and whilst I'm remembering things, there is another characteristic of submachine guns in general I should mention, which is uh, the maximum spread. Of course, because the submachine guns, as you hold the figure down, spread gets worse and worse until you let go and give it a chance to reset. Of course, the maximum spread that you get to 
uh, will matter when comparing weapons. So the thing to note here is that the ribeye rolls and the hell regal have a significantly larger maximum spread. So you're talking values of two and a half against two and three and a quarter against two and a half. So the ribeye rolls and the hell regal, they're greater maximum spread when you really go for a long volley of shots as compared to the MP18 and the Automatico. Okay then YouTubers, thanks for listening. I hope I've covered those in enough detail that you can go ahead now and spawn in and have the right weapon for the situation and the right weapon to suit your playstyle. As I've always said, I think DICE does a good job of providing the variants and the different weapons to, to suit any situation or personal playstyle. So, Go ahead, give it a go. Thanks for listening. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave me a thumbs down if you feel you must. Please do leave comments. I love to see them. Thanks very much. See you next time.